So, what I want to do is route multiple sources of audio to the Analog Heat Mark II Overbridge plugin. To do this, I need to specify where I want this audio track to be sent. So I'll play these chords here. And on this audio track, click the Audio 2 drop down menu. Here you could see the different audio tracks that this particular track can be sent to. The track with the Heat Overbridge plugin is named Heat Bus. So as soon as I select this, the audio will be sent to this track and processed by the analog heat. Now if we check the amp page on analog heat, we can see that the device is receiving the audio. And if I open up the analog heat overbridge plugin, we can also see that the audio is being sent to this track right here. So I'll change the character and you can begin hearing the changes in the audio that the analog heat is doing. Go through the different character circuits. It's crazy on this side. So I'll keep it here on saturation for some subtle distortion. Now I want to send another audio track to be processed by the analog heat. So I'll play this drum break that will add some rhythm and some transient hits to trigger the envelope follower that's inside the analog heat. So now I'll send this drum track to the analog heat the same way I did with the chords track. Going to the audio 2 and clicking heat bus. So now let me open up the plugin so we can look at the envelope follower. I'll also go to the envelope page on the actual device. Using the envelope follower will allow me to use the incoming audio as a modulator for the different parameters on the device. You can choose up to two destinations with individual control of these parameters. As I start to bring the trigger level down and increase the envelope control signal on the device, we can start seeing the envelope being affected and hearing it as well. You get some good visual feedback on the actual device and also inside the analog heat plugin right here. When I go to the filter page, we can see that it has a dedicated envelope that controls the frequency. So I'll turn this up a bit more, there was already some applied. I'll change the filter parameters so we can start hearing it a little bit more. Turn up the resonance, it's a bit more prominent. Nice. So already, we're adding some movement to the sound using two different sound sources, the chord track and the drum break. I'll go ahead and add a bass track that'll also be sent to the analog heat plugin. Audio two, heat bus, and play. Nice, bring this down a little bit. All right, cool. I'll open up the analog heat plugin again and adjust some more parameters in the plugin. Bring the low down a little bit. The highs down. You could also see it on the device being affected. I'll change the frequency on the filter. Uh, I think that's good. Another awesome feature that you would lock using Overbridge is the ability to use the DAW to control the parameters on the actual device, allowing you to automate and assign multiple parameters to a macro. I have one set up here in Ableton, so I'll go ahead and expand this, and on macro one, I have the filter frequency and the filter resonance assigned to this one knob. So let's go ahead and access the filter page on the device, and when I adjust this macro knob, it'll control these two parameters on the analog heat. Let's see how this sounds. We can get up a bit, we'll see on the device it's responding, and it's still being affected by the envelope that we applied earlier. This will allow you to do things like automate and add MIDI effects to the analog heat parameters. These are a few ways you can implement an analog heat mark II into a DAW, sending multiple audio sources via USB to be processed, and access to the parameters in the plugin for expanded control of the device.